Hi, I'm Nick Wilshire, and I'm from the South African Heritage Resources Agency in Cape Town, South Africa, and I'm presenting the use of SARS as a state-sponsored digital heritage repository and management system in South Africa. I'd first like to thank Pierre Grissenmeyer and David Myers for allowing us to make this presentation and for submitting the paper uh, for the conference. And we're very sorry that we weren't able to be there in person, but hopefully this video will give you guys a good idea of what SARS is all about and what it can do. The system was developed using Drupal, which is an open source content management system and it's one of the largest open source communities around with over 800,000 members and thousands of developers and a large variety of modules which have been developed for the platform. We built the system or version 1 of the of Saurus between January 2012 and April 2012 and we then rolled out the system to our staff at Sara uh, in May 2012. In August of 2012, we opened the system to the public for online applications and submitting sites. And in January 2013, we completed the development of version 2, which included the museum's collections management system aspects of SARS. We are in version 3, or the development of version 3 at the moment, which has largely got to do with pushing out the media content, improving the reporting interface, and cleaning up a lot of the old information and uh, version 4 we envisage to, to begin developing next year. SARS is the realization if you like of many ideas which came in our legislation in 1999 which replaced our old National Monuments Act from 1969 and the our organization came into place in 2000. Uh, we are the national body, but the 1990s legislation that we endorsed and are implementing uh, involved a lot of devolution. So it's the provincial tier, which is grade two resources in South Africa, and there are nine provinces and therefore nine heritage authorities in South Africa with varying degrees of capacity. And then there are over 230 or so local municipalities in South Africa, and each one of those is meant to have a heritage body or heritage unit working in the municipality. However, only one of those municipalities, the city of Cape Town Metropole, uh, has a heritage unit which is applied for powers in terms of the NHRA, our legislation. Um, so we have a long way to go in f devolving the powers all the way to local level across the rest of the country. Since 2012, we've managed to migrate over 22,000 sites into SARS and about 6,000 objects from various museums. And we've also migrated a number of impact assessments dating back to the, the 1980s, about 6,000 of those. Uh, we've geo-referenced those, those uh, or geo we've mapped them, uh, we've mapped the, the cases and reports related to those developments. We've also built up over 98,000 nodes of other related content to that information, so people and profiles and so on. And we've also registered over 1,800 users on SARS since going live to the public in August of last year. I'd like to just give you a quick overview of the system in the time that we've got allowed here. So the first thing I'd like to, to cover is the sites, the National Sites Archive. So the home page is www.sara.org.za and if you click on the SARS link it'll take you to, to the back end if you like of most of the SARS functions. The front page is our news articles and about the units at SARA and, and so on and there's a live feed to incoming cases. So once you click on Cyrus, you take into this page, and this gives you video tutorials on YouTube or for direct download. Uh, there are various presentations you can download as well that we produce for Cyrus. And there's a nice overview of Cyrus, which is a number of screenshots and text covering the system in a, in a fairly visual way. Um, 
at the bottom of the page you'll also see the CC by SA license that's a Creative Commons license that we use for SARS so almost all of the content on SARS except our logo you can use and download and share with other users as long as you cite the author uh, and you know, apply the the rules of the CC by SA license the website uses a lot of HTML5 so we recommend using Google Chrome or any browser except Internet Explorer 8 or older so if you're using Windows XP please use Google Chrome or another browser not Internet Explorer however if you're on Windows 7 then Internet Explorer the latest versions will work just fine from the uh, help page let's have a look at some sites so I'm going to go to the explore menu and there's sites and there's various sub menu options of the sites menu so let's have a look at the declared sites and let's do a sites query we use organic groups for managing archaeological sites and fossil sites and graves so that the GPS coordinates are protected but if I filter let's do a typical query for an archaeological series you'll see I've this current user has membership of the organic group for these sites so they come up and let's go and have a look at one of them uh, let's take a rock art site. Let's take that one. And now we'll see the site, which has got the uh, spatial information, um, it's got the property information, the organic groups, memberships, and then the site recording. You can also grade and declare and have site visit reports attached to a site. Let's go and have a look at the recording and this is where most of the fields belong for the formal recording of the site whether it's a building, archaeological site, fossil site, shipwreck and so on and so forth so there's most of our typical fields for an archaeological recording and then the images are attached to, to each uh, recording the uh, images we allow up to 10 meg megabytes per image and an unlimited number we have two NAS servers with 32 3 terabyte drives which effectively gives us about 90, 90 odd terabytes of storage and these are situated in two data centers in Cape Town and in Johannesburg in South Africa and the data is replicated and backed up between those two NAS servers all of this information and all of the, the, the services on SARS are provided free of charge to all the users institutions using SARS yeah, we also have a, a rock art motif listing that allows us to query imagery in a more specific way, say for paintings of elephants or eland or hartebeest and so on. So we can run fairly sophisticated and narrow queries on, uh, on a variety of content types on SARS using these kinds of mechanisms. Moving away from a typical archaeological site, we could look at some of our declared sites. Most of these were declared back in the National Monuments days, but we now also have National Heritage Sites proclaimed since 2000. Uh, we have about 26 of them in South Africa, so users are able to look at them, browse them, see them on a map, um, and, and explore them. So let's go to one of these sites. Mapagubwe is also a World Heritage Site, and there's all the information when it was declared, the grading history, the recording, photographs, what it is, and where it is. So this is a nice site. It doesn't only have a lat long, but it also has a whole cultural landscape which has been declared in terms of the of our legislation and also it's a World Heritage Site which has a, actually a larger buffer zone than, than the one you see in front of you. We also um, Besides the sites, we have the, the heritage management side of SARS, so the inventory of the national state is integrated with the case management side. So a typical thing people can do now is apply online for a permit or development. So I'm going to filter all the wind farms in South Africa. These are all the current wind farm applications going on in South Africa. We can zoom into them, click on them, and go to that case. Let's have a look at it and this is a first of its kind on a national scale being able to browse all the cases going on in the country and go and comment on them so the public participation process is captured on SARS as well so any member of the public registered conservation bodies and so on can add their comment to ongoing cases in their in their area or in their region the heritage reports all of the information the whole environmental process is uploaded by the applicant and the applicant maps that application on SARS themselves. 
uh, the other normal information, the case officer uh, images might have been uploaded to the case and so on, are loaded here. Um, and then the decision is also available to anybody uh, once it's been published. So this one has an official decision and this has been template driven so it makes it easier for our heritage officers and they have their logo, their footer and headers and their signatures are all generated automatically by the system with unique um, the unique case ID tracked on the system. The uh, Moving on from developments by type, we can also have a look at all the archival impact assessments and developments going back to the 1980s. This is what the map you're looking at here. This is under the cases and reports map option. Let's make that full screen and let's take uh, say the cadastral information in the northern cape. Uh, let's do that and let's take off say, the provinces and zoom into that area. Okay, so this is the Uppington, Kuruman. This is a big mining area for iron ore and various other minerals. Um, you can then see the farm boundaries and farm na names. We also have raster maps, so this one in 50,000 topographic map and the one in 250,000 topographic map. Uh, and let's take this off. Um, and then the current cases on SARS, so these dark red numbers, and then the lighter red ones are the older ones have been scanned from our archives dating back to the 19, between 1980 and 2009. SARS has enabled us to gr achieve a gr high, much greater level of compliance with developments because the applicants are submitting and mapping these cases online. So this difference between what the last year and the last 20 or 30 years is not really the number of developments that have occurred there in one year. It's rather the compliance that has improved significantly in the Northern Cape. So all of those are linked to a case uh, and impact assessment. Uh, from that map, we can also look at permit applications. So if we were interested in building applications for alterations or demolitions to buildings, what I've done here is I've filtered our national permit applications map and I've filtered for a MAFA, which is the Heritage Authority at provincial level in KwaZulu-Natal, one of our provinces. You can immediately see that their compliance in uh, other districts of the province is very low and very high in the urban center. Their major urban center is Durban. So let's zoom into Durban and we can click on one of these cases and go off to that and have a look at the permit or the application that's being proposed. I'm not sure if these have been permitted yet. No, not those two. But one of these, this is one of their cases. This has been permitted. So the drawings, the photographs, and then the permit are available to members of the public to, to download and to the applicant, of course. Okay, so that's the case management side. Um, so all our permits and the inventorization of our, our heritage is being done now automatically as part of the application process. The last uh, thing I want to show you is our objects. So if I go back to Cyrus, I can browse some objects. We still have a bit of work to do on improving the reports um, and the, the scope and the views and the filters that are allowed to, to people browsing museum collections. But we may t typically browse um, by a certain code. And then uh, we say we're interested in blankets. And we could do this across collections. There are currently 400 museums uh, in South Africa registered with with the South African Museums Association. So we have a huge potential market of, of users and collaborating institutions to load all this information onto SARS and to standardize the terminology being used amongst the various curators. So we're extremely excited by this. And then it also integrates with our sites and with our permitting process uh, all in, in quite seamlessly. Uh, let's have a look at this one. So we have an image and it's a blanket and then all the descriptive, the history, the provenance, um, all of the other information that has been loaded for this particular object is available and then it links to its uh, sub-objects or its cases and permits. Okay, that's a, I think that's about enough time. Um, so I, I look forward to receiving emails and questions from you. My email address is n for Nick, Wiltshire, W I L T S H I R E. I'll just write it in here so it's on screen. 
at sara.org.za. If you register an account, it's all free. Please go to the home page and register an account on Sara, to sara.org.za. Click on login register and create an account. Just specify your first name, dot surname, in your username, and your email address, and you will then get an account. Uh, and then you can message me on Sara. So I'm Nick Wilshire is my, my username. Uh, so I look forward to your questions. We are also producing the first distribution of Sarus for free download later this year. So look out for that on our website when it's available. And other countries can then download the entire architecture of Sarus as we've built it so far and implement it in their countries. Of course, we'll be updating it as we change things or tweak things. And we'll then update the distribution as we move forward. Thank you very, very much.